Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. July 22, 2020, the Supply Chain Edition. First up, from the Washington Post, Apple pledges to be carbon neutral by 2030. Tech giant says it will step up its investment in solar power and secure commitments from suppliers to use renewable energy. Sustainability is obviously something very important, but for Apple to take not only its business, but its vast supply chain carbon neutral within the next decade will reorient the company's operations around climate change. This can only be viewed as a positive step, as many other companies will have to also become carbon neutral. No doubt the Compliance Podcast Network will have to move to that direction. So it's the uh, right stance to take, and sustainability uh, still continues to draw uh, rave reviews, even in spite of the Trump administration. Next up, who's in your supply chain? Well, uh, unfortunately, that's becoming more critical as uh, cyber attacks on Freddie Mac vendors highlighted Supply chain vulnerabilities, as reported in the Wall Street Journal, a recent cyber attack on one of Faraday Max vendors showed how large companies are vulnerable to breaches targeted not only at themselves, but the companies they hire. You only need to think of the target uh, supply or breach, which, of course, was through an HVAC vendor. Uh, Freddie Mac notified borrowers by letter on July 7th that the company that performs due diligence on its loans experienced a ransomware attack earlier this year. The attack locked the vendor's system, and so the vendor didn't know all the details of the incident or the information which had been affected. The vendor found no evidence that information had been stolen or misused, probably because they were incapable of figuring that out. Um, Next up, from the Wall Street Journal, the CFTC chair pushes to finalize Dodd-Frank rules. If everything goes according to plan... The uh, commissioner of the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, Keith Tarbert's plan will soon finish the implementing the decades-old legislation that mandated a massive regulatory overhaul of U.S. derivative markets. Tarbert, who was appointed chair of the CFTC last year, has made it his mission to finalize several thorny portions of Dodd-Frank, which vastly expanded the agency's oversight of derivative training. Once again, uh, having this done in the Trump administration is nothing short of amazing, but Tarbert seems uh, committed to doing this going forward. And finally, we end with a story from the New York Times that the tapestry CEO was compelled to resign after alleged misconduct. Jai Zeitlin, the chief executive tapestry and one of only four black chief executives in the Fortune 500, resigned on Tuesday. The unexpected move came after the company's board was made aware of a misconduct allegation involving him and hired a law firm to investigate. He said he was stepping down for personal reasons, and he acknowledged in a statement later that his exit was related to a past relationship. He said, in the past month, a woman I photographed and had a relationship for more than 10 years ago reached out to various news organizations, and he felt compelled to resign. So uh, Me Too continues to... um, Bedevil many uh, corporate CEOs, particularly those whose conduct uh, uh, previously uh, may have been acceptable, but it's certainly not in today's light. And to take down Zeitlin obviously is significant around uh, his role as a, one of only four black CEOs in Fortune 500 companies. So uh, you need to watch your step. You need to engage in conduct that is uh, beyond reproach. And if there's a message It is that. Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Daily Compliance News, which is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. 